All right, hey, we are back. This is John. And it's Eric. And it's Way of Geeks. And again, we have no Paul. Uh, Paul just got back from vacation and uh, has not had a chance to catch up on Loki. And since we are reviewing episode two of Loki, um, he bowed out. And I don't blame him because, you know, this is spoiler full. So get ready. If you have not watched it, go watch it. Come back and listen to us. And then join in the conversation. Let us know what you think. All right. So Loki episode two, the variant. Um, I guess I'll start real quick. Uh, last we left Loki, he had joined up with Mor- uh, Morbius, played by Owen Wilson in the uh, TVA. Uh, Morbius tells him that they need his help because he's a variant now. And uh, he's got no way back home. And they need his help to track down a rogue variant because it's a version of Loki. And that's how the the last episode ended. So this one starts, we open up on a renaissance fair in Oshkosh, Wisconsin in 1985. Uh, The nice little Back to the Future reference there, 1985. (laughs) (laughs) I think they did that on purpose. So there's a fair, a little renaissance fair going on, a little... Time portals open up, and the TVA soldiers, whatever they call themselves, show up looking for this Loki variant, and they, uh, they show up in a tent behind a couple of the uh, you know, the shops and everything. And they, you know they're tracking this thing, the the Loki variant in there. So they show up in there. The, you know they realize it's a trap because everything's kind of dark. And the variant comes out of the shadows and starts taking them out one by one. When Loki gets done with all of them, except for the one in charge, the captain, knocks that one out, kidnaps him, kidnaps her, and drags her through a time portal. C-20, I think it was. (laughs) Yeah, there you go. See? Hey, look at you. So they disappear. Uh, then we do the Loki credits, and we cut to um, our Loki sitting at a desk at the TVA, and Miss Minutes is quizzing him on what he's learned on the Time Variance Authority. So, like, the, you know, because he's working for them now, they're trying to school him. So, and she's she's basically quizzing him to see if he can join the team or whatever, you know. And while she's talking to him and asking the questions. Well, he's sitting there reading a magazine. <laughs> he just keeps asking her, are you really here? Are you a hologram? What are you? You know, because she's like hopping around his desk. Yeah. So he rolls up the magazine and tries to hit her. <laughs> and she jumps and gets mad at him. And he keeps trying to swing at her and she keeps jumping out of the way. And finally, she jumps into the computer. So there's something going on there. But again, this is like the TVA weird shit is going on in this place all the time so sure this thing that was solid on his desk is now in a computer whatever uh yeah gets- and and turns all monochromy because the computer is from like 1980 even though the tva spans multiple timelines and has a lot of futuristic technology they apparently they apparently use computers from 1980 well you know because you know they don't build them like they used to i guess i don't know <laughs> you would have thought they would have all overheated by now but whatever uh yeah they've got certain things from like old school shit and new school it's weird uh they're hodgepodge of equipment that, that they use but yeah she tur- turns on monochromy and i don't know if you caught it but that's right when morbius walks in and tells him hey yeah come on let's go they're gonna go talk about the variant while he comes in to talk to to Loki, she's on there, and if you zoom in, like you pause it and zoom in on her, she pops up a little message that basically says you failed, or whatever. Like, like basically, you, you didn't pass your fucking exam. Like, like she's mad at him, so fuck you. You you don't pass. So they get up, they go uh, to discuss the variant, and yeah, Morbius. There you go. Thank you. I keep calling him Morbius. Mobius makes a lot more sense because of time. The Mobius strip, I get it. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. But not not Ooh. Morbius like the vampire dude. 
I know. I was, uh, I <laughs> so, the two of them go meet up with the uh, the TVA soldiers. Um, there's one I know they've named her, but um, the black woman that's one of the main characters that really can't stand Loki. Yeah. They named her, and Paul named her right off the bat, and I, and I can't remember her name. But she's there. They're all discussing what they're going to do about the variant. And you can see this clear animosity from most of the rest of the team, but especially her, toward Loki. Like, they don't want him there. And Loki's just playing it up. Like, every time Mobius says, like, well, you know, we're going to check this variant. And Loki's like, because it's me. And then <laughs> he's like, you know, uh, we've had trouble and whatever. And Loki's like, so you called it an expert, which is me. You know, <laughs> he keeps, like, that smug attitude and just fucking with them left and right. Yeah, yeah. I mean, just just an aside here for for a moment. Um, I mean, uh, Tom Hiddleston's been good as Loki. He's really good in this series. Like, he is funny as fuck. He like has constant. There's constant banter between uh, him and Mobius, but there's also just like all this quirky attitude that he has even though he's essentially powerless at this point or roughly powerless oh, yeah. and it's funny too because they uh someone had said and i think we said before that this was like an office comedy but it's like an office comedy combined with a detective show yeah so it's like office space meets ncis so whatever you know uh because they're on a constant mission to catch the variant but they're doing a lot of the banter back and forth like you would see in basic office shows. Um, but yeah, he, he does a really good job with this. You made a comment earlier before we got to this episode that um, you really love him in this and you don't think that they gave him enough time in you know, the movies that he's been in. Yeah. And I kind of agree with you, but also he was one of my favorite parts of any MCU movie he was in. He just he elevated it that much, so that's why I was kind of looking. I was very excited for this show because, like, I, and then I said it before when we reviewed episode one. Going into the show, as much as I was looking forward to it, I still forgot how much I love Tom Hiddleston as Loki. Yeah, he does such an amazing job, and now here you're focused just on him, or on you know, him and ensemble cast, and he and yeah, all. But I mean. In the movies, he was he was a supporting character, right? I mean, it was yeah. it was really about Thor, and he was sort of a yeah, or it was the Avengers, and he was the big bad in the first. Yeah, exactly. So, they really didn't focus on him as a person, although they did do clever banter, particularly between him and Thor, that was funny. But yeah, and throughout the series of MCU movies there was just enough character growth within him to make people look forward to this series, which is another point. This is currently tracking as the most popular MCU show period above the last two or the only two they've done, but WandaVision, but like not just above WandaVision and Falcon Winter Soldier. I mean, I wouldn't argue with that for a Leaps second. Bounds. Leaps and bounds above it. Yeah. I wouldn't argue with that for a second. I mean, it's way better than Falcon and Winter Soldier. Uh, yeah. No offense to that show, but yeah, and I enjoy both of those shows, but this is so much better. If you're making a comparison two episodes in, it's way better than one division. <laughs> yeah, yeah, this thing is amazing, and the fans are already speaking as far as like droves are coming in droves to watch the show. It's just ridiculous, like how good the ratings are for the show. So, yeah, so we love Loki. Yeah. Uh, so uh, they decide they're going to track down the variant and they head to the fair because they find out that the agents are missing. Find the dead agents and realize that the captain is gone. And this is where Loki tries to fool them because he, what he really wants here is he wants to meet with the uh, timekeepers. The lizard men. Yeah, the lizard men. So he's trying to fool them into getting him to see them quicker. He's like, you know, basically he's like, if you get me to see them, we've got to work all this out. And Mobius is like, nope, ain't gonna happen. 
So he tells them that this is a trap and my variant is waiting on the other side of the tent for you to go look for him and he's going to kill all of you. And Moby's standing there for a second and then he calls his bluff and says, no, he's lying. Yeah. And Loki's like, yeah, it's worth a shot, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Basically. So it's more of that banter, like, you know, he, he tried and it didn't work. So uh, they go back to the TVA headquarters and Moby springs Loki over to a desk with all these files and is like, all right, and basically makes him do like the grunt detective work of looking through all these files. He's like, try to find something. And he's reading all these files that they've got, dealing with the variant, trying to figure out what the hell is going on with this thing. So you want to take it over? Sure. Um, so, well, actually, there's another tiny scene here that was mildly amusing when he tries to go talk to the librarian. It almost reminded me of the of that that terrible uh, creature from uh, Monsters Inc., the mm -hmm. Mike Wazowski lady or whatever. <laughs> Always but, Yeah. But then, uh, you know, he, he's asking about a whole bunch of different things. And she's like, nope, classified, nope, classified, nope, classified. What can I have? And, and then she The favorite part of that was, too, was um, he talks to her like two times. And she's just doing her, her work. She's typing. She's ignoring him. And finally, he reaches oh, out yeah. and her bell. And she looks up, like, can I help you? Yeah. <laughs> a very a stickler for the rules. Yeah. But yeah, so yeah, then he's like, no, everything's classified. She, she ultimately gives him a stack of files about other Loki variants, I guess. Something like that, yeah. And so he's looking through all that stuff, and then uh, he eventually realizes somehow, and that's a little bit of a stretch, but it's fine, uh, realizes what's happening and that the variant is likely going to right before apocalypse events uh it can do the variant can do whatever it wants and then because the area gets destroyed anyway and everybody's dead it doesn't actually cause a branch in the timeline right so there's no time variance energy or some shit yeah there's nothing detectable to that yeah i forget i forget what they called it uh but yeah, uh, something D dis. Uh, it's it's gonna bug me, but I can't remember it now. But there's none of that. And if they if they do go to a timeline and they change something, the time variance authority can see it. Well, they never see it, and he picks up on every uh, apocalypse event. There's nothing. He said that's where the variant's hiding. Yep, so uh, they go to Pompeii right before the volcano explodes to test this out. And Loki's running around acting a fool, letting goats loose, telling everybody they're going to die, and he's from the future. Yeah, because Mobius tells him to keep a low profile, and he's like, why? Yeah. <laughs> why here in about 30 seconds? <laughs> yeah, and so... At one point, Mobius is like, oh, fuck, what did I do? Letting him wreck this place. But then the volcano erupts, and he realizes at that point when he looks at his little whatever device that there's no there's no change. There's no time variance as far as he can see. Right. And so the theory is proven right. Right, yep. And so after that, um, they go back to try to find out where the time variant might be hiding. And I actually forget, even though I watched it last night, uh, what clues they use. But they use clues somehow to figure out which specific events the variant might be hiding in. Yeah. Yeah, and I forget too, but they figure Well, out anyway, they, they come across, Loki finally comes across one. They, they, they agree to a gentleman's bet. Uh, who's going to find it first? And then Loki eventually comes across one. It's like a hurricane in 2050 or something like that in Louisiana. Yeah. And so they go there to see what's going on. And uh, pretty much immediately they're met with an odd character when they, them and the whole uh, team goes in there, the whole TVA team, mm -hmm. all the, all the C's and B's and whatever the hell they are, agents. 
uh, all go in there together. And almost immediately after they split apart, of course, why wouldn't they split apart? But almost immediately after they split apart, uh, they run into an odd character and he's like, I'm buying plants. And they're like, there's a hurricane coming. <laughs> he's yeah. like, but they're half off. All right, yeah. You want to take it from there? Uh, yeah, I guess this is kind of where like Loki goes off on his own and runs into the same, the same guy, I think, at first and realizes that uh, no, he goes off with the, the Yeah, he goes off with the lady B-15, I don't know what, whatever she is Yeah, yeah, the, the leader Her, goes off with her and they run into the guy in the store again and that's when the guy grabs her by her hand and you see a little bit of green energy and the guy collapses and the lady turns around and starts talking to Loki and you realize that it's the variant using similar mind control to what Loki did in the first mm -hmm. movie, right? But Loki just kind of mind controlled them, but not quite. But he also did it with the, uh, the mind stone. Right, uh, he didn't do it just with his own magic. But this Loki is using their own magic to do it, and actually possessing them and speaking to them. So he's talking to him, he realizes that it's the other Loki. So they have a, a little bit of banter back and forth there, where uh, our Loki is trying to figure out what this one wants, and it hops from body to body throughout the store. They're in a it's like a Costco, but it's it's owned by Roxxon, which Roxxon is a big corporation in Marvel. Yeah. So, and I know it's come up in another. I think it came up in Ant Man. It was somewhere. It's one of the other movies. The Roxxon Corporation is in there. So it's again leaning on established shit. Uh, this variant hops from body to body, talking to Loki, and eventually hops into this. Big old Louisiana, good old boy, <laughs> and beats the piss out of Loki. Because <laughs> Loki is like trying to like convince the variant we can work together, and the variant's having none of it. But, and you get the uh, the information that it wants to destroy the TVA. You know, it, wa it, wa it wants to create havoc and blow shit up for the TVA, basically. And he's like, we can work together. And he's like, I want to talk to the timekeeper so that I can overthrow them. Yeah. You know, take over. So this variant in this guy's body beats the fuck out of him. And they fight for a minute or two. And Loki just gets his ass kicked. And I think that's about the point where uh, he says something to the effect of, like, you know, I'm superior to you, whatever. And the possessed body laughs and collapses to the ground. And then the Loki variant walks out of the shadows from off to the other side. And it's a female Loki. Mm -hmm. Yet the actress is playing her, but she's well known. You, you've seen her before. Um, Sophia DiMartino is her name. Yeah, there you go. And I've seen her in a couple of things. But uh, so she plays a female Loki and throws Loki off completely. He's like, oh, well, well I'm a girl. Uh, <laughs> so, like, they go back and forth at each other again for a little while. And she basically just blows them off like, I'm superior to you in every way. I'm the superior one. You're nothing. You're a variant. And I'm going to do what I have to do. And opens up a, one of the time portals and goes to walk through it. But she set the time reset devices all over that store to go off. Like a hundred of them. <laughs> yeah. She's going to kill everybody. So she's just going to like, wreak havoc on everything. And our Loki realizes what she's doing. And you can see where he realizes, okay, I have to stop her. It's not a matter of joining her anymore. I have to stop her. He's got that look on his face. And again, credit to Tom Hiddleston. And his acting, he doesn't say anything. He just looks. And you're like, all right, you, know, you see him switch. Where in the first episode, you kind of saw his personality shift from 
being the Avengers 2012 asshole to, okay, I see how my life ends and I can't have that happen again because of his mother and whatever else. So there was, the, they quickly did that switch there. They firm, almost firmly do it here where like he's completely changed over now to, I can't let this happen. And just as he's getting ready to go chase her, Mobius and the rest of the crew come running in and all they see is our Loki looks like he's getting ready to run away, which he Mobius has been told time and again not to trust him, right? So now he's like, well, where the fuck is Loki? And it looks like he's getting ready to run away from them. And there are agents laying all over the place and people laying all over the place. So it looks like he did something really bad. And then Mobius tells him, stop, don't do it. And Loki runs through the door. And the episode ends. So... And I gotta be careful because we just watched episode three. Yeah, last night, yeah. So try not to sure. spoil anything. Into that one, but uh, so yeah, so that's where this episode ends. Uh, so you get a lot of. Again, it's kind of it looks like similar to maybe Wandavision, where you had a couple of episodes that were slower paced, but you still got just enough information in it to make it like, oh, okay, this is happening. That was this episode. Uh, and it looks like that's like kind of like the part of the series that we're hitting, is that slow building a foundation for something, and then it's going to like blow up in the last few episodes. I mean, to some degree, but I, but I would say this is very clearly in a very Marvel universe, unlike, yeah. unlike uh, WandaVision, which for the first three, four episodes, we're like, what the fuck? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, this is definitely very, like, like you said, very entrenched in not just the Marvel Universe, but specifically Loki. Yeah. Our, like, everything you've known about the character over the last 10 years, 23 movies, whatever, every movie he's been in, it's all coming to play in these episodes. And yeah. see his character quickly growing into the character that we left behind in Endgame. So it, it's been, it was a really good watch. I enjoyed it. Yeah, yeah. I thought I thought it was good. Actually, the show's getting better. Uh, the first episode actually slight me, slightly had me scratching my head and like, where the hell are they going with this? But it is actually pretty interesting. <laughs> yeah and the characters are played really well I, part of this is actors tom hiddleston uh the guy that oh, plays mobius uh owen wilson yeah owen wilson thanks amazing in this yeah yeah and that definitely has a lot of play into this and, and the two of them together they're not buddy cop but we're almost headed down that path in a way <laughs> no and so i said see is very a uh like i said is much of a Office drama and detective drama combined. Where so it's, like, it's kind of just enough of both to make it interesting. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. I, you got anything else in this episode outside of the fact that it was good? No, 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 not really. I think we, we pretty much covered it. All right, look at that. We nailed that one in 30 minutes. Uh yeah, this episode was really good. Go hopefully you've watched it if you're here. If not, well, sorry. Spoiler. <laughs> uh, come on back and listen to episode three next week. We're, uh, we're actually going to record episode three and four next week because we're a week behind on these because of vacation. So then we'll be all caught up. But uh, So next week we'll have Paul back and we'll do episode three and four. All right, so that's it for this episode. Uh, let us know what you think of Loki and uh, come back next week for episode three and four when we get Paul to join us again and we catch up with the series. Uh, like, subscribe, ring a bell. Hit us up at whatifgeeks.com, whatifgeeks at gmail.com, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Patreon, and all of that shit. And we will see you next week. Good night, Tony. Good night, Roy O'Bannon. <laughs> you know that one? Well, yeah. Shanghai Noon? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shanghai Nights, whatever. Shanghai it was. Nights, yeah. Shanghai Nights, yeah. Yeah. Ah, uh, see, I got you. <laughs> <laughs>
stay tuned for when Eric names another character. 